What we're doing is we're going to be dividing up, okay, this region here below this curve and in between the x-axis. So our function here is f of x equals x cubed plus 2, and we're going to be finding the area of the region between 1 and 3, okay, below the curve and above the x-axis. So I've shaded that region right here. Now what we want to do is we want to find out okay the width of the rectangles and the height of the rectangles so what it's like doing it's like subdividing this region up into rectangles like this sometimes this is called the right rectangular approximation method the RRAM okay and so what I'm doing is I'm just right now I'm just subdividing it into four rectangles just to show you what we're doing here now when you take b minus a, that's, this is the b value over here on the right, and this is the a value over here on the left. So when we take b minus a, that's giving us this total distance, which is going to be 2. Okay, so we have 2, and we're dividing it by n. So if n is 4, that means that we're going to have uh, 4 rectangles, and that's going to give us 2 fourths, which is 1 half. That's going to be the width uh, of each rectangle. Okay, so you're with me so far? Now, over here, the b minus a divided by n is the same as this. It's the width of each rectangle times i. And what's i? i is our index, okay? We're starting from 1 and we're going to n, the number of rectangles that we're working with. Okay, and so what you're going to do is you're going to start at the left side of the region. In this case, it's going to be at 1, okay? And then what you're going to do is you're going to move one width, see, 2 over n i, one width to the right, and then you're going to put this x value into your function for x, and that's going to give you your y value, which is the height. Okay, so we're putting this quantity into our function in place of x to get our height. Now, as i increases, say as i goes to 2, you're starting at 1, now you're going over 1, 2 widths, and then you put that value in, you're getting the height of that rectangle. When i is 3, you're going over 3 widths, and you're going up, and that's giving you the height of that rectangle, and so on. And by summing these up, okay, Summing them up, we're going to be finding out the sum of all the individual rectangles. We're going to be approximating the area. Now, if you take the limit as n goes to infinity, look what happens here. This is going to be getting thinner and thinner, smaller and smaller, until it just becomes paper thin. You're going to have an infinite number of rectangles. You're going to get the exact area underneath the curve. Okay, so you're with me so far? So this is the, the power of limits, and this is getting us into uh, what calculus starts to get into at the beginning. So what we're going to do now is, let's go ahead and keep proceeding with this example. This is a little bit more challenging, just some of the arithmetic, but I just want to show you how it works, because sometimes students get a little bit tripped up on some of the details. So we're going to put 1 plus 2 over ni in for x. Okay, so let's go over here and give ourselves some more room. So this is going to be 1 plus 2i over n cubed plus 2, okay? And that's all multiplied by 2 over n. <clears throat> okay, now you see how this is a binomial, two terms? So what we're going to use is we're going to use the binomial expansion theorem, Pascal's triangle. And if you remember Pascal's triangle, it looks like this, right? 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1. And what we're going to do is we're going to go down to this third row. This is row 0, 1, 2, 3. We're going to go down to the third row to help us expand this third degree binomial. So this is going to be 1, 3, 3, 1. And then this is going to be, the first term is going to be 1 cubed, 1 squared, 1 to the first, and 1 to the 0. And the second term is going to be 2i over n uh, to the 0. And we're going in ascending order. So 2i over n to the first, 2i over n to the second, and 2i over n to the third, okay, and all these terms are going to be added together, okay. Remember, this is still plus 2, and it's still being multiplied by 2 over n, okay, so you're with me so far. So we're just going to simplify, so anything to the 0 power is 1, 1 cubed is 1, times 1 is 1, so that was pretty easy. This is going to be 1 squared is 1, times 3 is 3, times 2 is going to give us 6i over n, okay, over here we've got 2 squared is 4, times 3 is 12, so that gives us 12i squared over n squared, okay, plus 1 to the 0 is 1 times 1 is 1, 2 cubed is 8i cubed over n cubed plus 2. Okay, now I see this 2 and this 1. Let's just go ahead and combine those. Let's make this 3, 
okay? All times 2 over n. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to take the 2 over n, we're going to distribute it to each term, okay, like that. So we get 6 over n plus 12i over n squared plus 24i squared over n cubed plus 16i cubed over n to the fourth. Now, along the way here, you can see I dropped this summation sign, but really want to carry that through the problem. So these are all being summed okay, up from i equals 1 to n, this whole quantity. But what we're going to do now is we're going to split these up into separate summations. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this as 6 over n plus the sum of 12i over n squared plus the sum of 24i squared over n cubed plus the sum of 16i cubed over n to the fourth. Okay, now what you can do is you can bring, you know, in front of the summation this term here. You can think of this term as a constant. We're just going to leave the i, okay, in, to the right of the summation. So we're going to bring these guys in front, okay, just to kind of get them out of the way. So this is going to be 6 over n, okay, 1, plus 12 over n squared, which is going to be i. This is going to be 24 over n cubed which is i squared, okay, and then this is going to be 16 over n to the fourth i cubed. So now, I'm sure in your math book, your teacher probably showed you the formulas for all of these, okay, summations, like the sum of consecutive integers, the sum of consecutive squares, the sum of consecutive cubes. I'm going to do those substitutions now. So if you were to add up 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 n times, that's going to give you n. So this is going to be n times 6 over n, the n's cancel, so we get 6, okay? Over here, we have i, okay, that's going to be n times n plus 1 divided by 2, okay? And you can see this n and this n cancel, the 12 and the 2 reduce down, so we get 6n plus 6 over n, so 6n plus 6 all over n. Okay, over here, we get 24 over n cubed times n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1, all divided by 6, and you can see the 6 and the 24 reduce, that's 4. One of these n's cancels with one of these, leaving n squared. And if we uh, foil this out a little bit further, we get 2n squared plus 3n plus 1. And if we distribute the 4, we're getting 8n squared plus 12n plus 4, all divided by n squared. Okay, plus the last one here, 16, here let's put it over here, 16 over n to the fourth times n squared, n plus 1 squared over 4. And you can see these reduce, two of these cancel with two of these. This comes out to n squared plus 2n plus 1. We distribute the 4, we get 4n squared plus 8n plus 4, all divided by n squared. Okay, so you're with me so far? Okay, good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to split these up into separate fractions, okay? So I'm just going to divide each term by the denominator, okay? Like that. So I'm just going to split them up. So we've got 6 plus 6n divided by n is 6 plus 6 over n plus the n squareds cancel. We get 8 plus this is 12. One of these n's and one of these n's would cancel. So that's going to be 12 over, okay, n plus 4 over n squared plus, here the n squareds are going to cancel, we get 4, plus uh, 8n divided by, well, one of these n's is going to cancel with one of these, so it's 8 over n, plus 4 over n squared. Okay, so you're with me so far, so it's, it's, it's quite a long uh, process, okay? But now what we're going to do is, okay, we're going to combine like terms, and then what we're going to do is we're going to look at how many rectangles do we want to use to approximate this area. Do we want to use 4? If it's 4, we're going to put 4 in place of n, and that will be our approximate area. If we want 10 rectangles, we put 10 in for n. But let's do this right now, just to, in the interest of saving time. Let's say we want n to go to infinity. We want there to be an infinite number of rectangles, infinitely thin, okay, so we can get the exact area underneath the curve. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the limit as n goes to infinity. So as n goes to infinity, 6 divided by n, as n gets larger and larger, this term is going to go to 0. This term here is going to go to 0. This term here is going to 0. This term here is going to 0. And this term here is going to 0. 
So what do, what do we have left? We have 6 plus 6 is 12, plus 8 is 20, plus 4 is 24. So the exact area of this irregular shaped region, okay, below the curve and in between the x-axis is going to be 24 square units. So this is the form you want to memorize. Go ahead and take a look at my past video talking about this uh, concept a little bit further if you want additional help. And uh, subscribe to the channel, uh, check out some of my past videos, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the future videos. I'll talk to you soon.